Parshas Miketz, Shvi'i. All the brothers are reunited, sitting in a room, breaking bread, eating a feast. And fascinatingly, Yosef instructs them where to sit, and he seats them in chronological birth order. Now, this is actually much more difficult than you might think, because all of the Shvatim, all 11, not Binyamin, he was born later, but the first 11 are born in a six-year period. They're born very, very tight up against each other. It's not like one has white hair and one has black hair. and one is Very, very uh, difficult to see who might be older. But he somehow knows who's older and seats them as such. How does he know? And then, according to the Medrash, he sits there looking at his cup and says, oh yeah, I can tell you stories about your childhood. And he starts telling them stories that he has no way of knowing. And they don't understand how this is possible. And the Pasuk says, Vayishtu, Vayishkeru imo. They drank and they got drunk with him. And the Medrash says that this is the first time that either of them, meaning the brothers or Yosef, had drank wine ever since they sold Yosef. None of them had celebrated for decades, but today they're together, even though it's unbeknownst to them, and they party. And then when it's time to leave, hugs, hugs, and kisses, sends them off, and he says to his chamberlain, do me a favor, take my magic goblet that helps me tell them who's older and who's not, and hide it in the backpack of the youngest one. And sure enough, they do that. And the brothers are going home, and they're very happy that now they have a friend in, you know, in power in Egypt. And all of a sudden, the KGB surrounds them on the highway. And they say, hey guys, great to see you. They say, no, not so great to see you. You stole my master's cup. To which the brothers respond, why would we steal your master's cup? We even brought back the original monies that we thought was a mistake. We would never steal from your master. Your master's been so nice to us. We would never. They say, we'll see. And they line them all up, one at a time, and go through their luggage. And sure enough, when it gets to Binyamin, they find the cup. And the brothers rip their clothes, and they cry, and they can't believe what has befallen them. And they go back, they're brought back to the city, and they stand in front of Yosef. And Yehuda says to Yosef, take us all as slaves. We don't know how this happened. We have nothing to say. We have nothing to justify. We will all be slaves to you. And Yosef says, nonsense. That wouldn't be reasonable and fair. The one who stole my cup, he will be slaves. He will be a slave to me. And the rest of you, alu l'shalom alavichem. You can go back peacefully to your old dad. And on that cliffhanger, Parshas Miketz comes to a close. Have an amazing Shabbos. And don't forget to do Shnaim Yomi.